Coding Challenge Review Expert 21st of February Question number one Is divisible by previous digit? We've solved that already a couple of weeks ago, right? That means I'm going to skip it If anyone has any problem, let me know However, question number two is a brand new Get multiples of Hmm, that's an interesting question, I believe. So, we have, how many arguments do we have, guys? Two, Two. correct. Correct, one array and one string, right? So, we want to see out of the list of numbers we get as, as the first argument, give me all the multiples of these two numbers, could be two, could be three, could be one, whatever, until up to that given limit yeah so can you tell me the multiples of 5 up to 23 5 up to 23 Michael, four? No, I don't want the count, I don't want the length, I want the, the actual numbers. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Add to twenty-three. That's it, yeah. And can you tell me the multiples of seven up to twenty-three? 7, 14, 21, right? So I, I think everybody understands the problem, right? Yeah, no. So essentially we want to add them all, no? Is that what we want? Yeah. No, sorry, we don't want to add them. We just want to list them. Okay, even easier, right? We don't need to add them all. I think that's a question comes next. Cool. So let's create a function, get multiples of... And the function receives... Numbers and limit, for instance, right? Uh, so I would like to get first of all all the multiples of five and then all the multiples of seven. And you can figure out that essentially we need to repeat the same algorithm twice on the first test case. On the second test case, we need to repeat the, test, the, the same pattern three times, right? To help on that, I'm going to create a new function called get multiples of number. So that will receive an individual number and then it will give me all the multiples of that number, right? So I'm trying to split and to separate the logic a bit. So assuming that that function receives a number, I'm going to use a for loop, classic for loop, right? Equals number, oh actually, you can do there's different ways to do that, to be honest. I keep it simple. So uh, to calculate the, mul the multiples, I'll multiply the number by one, by two, by three, by four, by five, right? Something like that. So index, yeah, index is less than something. I'll come back to that in a minute. And then index plus plus. So now what's the condition here? Is the limit. Yeah, but according to what, the way I prepare that, I will be one, two, three, four. We could simplify that. I'm thinking, right? I'm, I'm thinking how to do that. So we, I could change that a bit. Instead of starting at one, I can start at a number. I is less than limit. And then I, we could do I plus equal number. Right? That's probably a simpler way to do that. Why? Because we can create an array here, multiples of number. Eventually, you remember what we discussed this morning. If the function m is get multiples of number, then let's create an array and let's return it. Whoa. Oh. Yeah? Something like that. Why? 
because now here we can hopefully simply do multiples of number dot push correct index it's probably the simplest solution we can as I say start the index at one two three and then multiply it but I believe that's a bit simpler right so I in the first case will be five assuming the number is five is five smaller than 23 yes it is then add number five next iteration we are not adding one we are adding five plus five ten right and so on it's probably smaller or equal right just in case are we including the limit yes or no yes no no it's not obvious right it's not specified at all we don't have any corner case where the limit is actually a multiple so that's up up to you it depends on the way you read the, the problem. Anyway, assuming that function works, please remember that in reality, we are receiving an array of, of what? Strings, correct. And limit is a string too. We should be careful with these subtle details, right? Just keep it very in mind. So now, I'm going to use reduce. So I will use uh, return numbers dot reduce uh, so on the accumulator or let me no let me change that no 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 let me change that so first of all i get the multiples of for each digit right so um uh, i'm not sure to hear how to do that so that's the typical problem where I, i'm thinking about several approaches right and i don't know which one is better that's, that's the consequence of not preparing these things. But also the, the positive side is if there is something wrong, we can hopefully find the problem altogether, right? So, okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, I will I'll create a accumulator. I'm not sure about the naming conventions. And I know I'll get a number, which is not a number, right? So first of all, let me get numbers. How do you transform an array of strings into an array of numbers? Correct. Map number, right? So then, A, hey, at least I know I'm dealing with numbers. So that will be a proper number here. Actually, I'm going to rename the variables. Instead of numbers, a string numbers. Yeah? To make sure we are dealing with numbers, with strings. And then string limit. Right. So then, because I want to return an array, I will initialize the accumulator yeah, to an empty array. So I will also rename accumulator to multiples. Something like that. It's, it's probably not perfect, but A, still better than accumulator, right? And now, that's the important key. So now look at what I need to do. I want to return, and I'm playing hard now multiples dot concat let me create a variable uh, so that will be multiples array um, or multiple off yeah I'm not I'm not convinced about the naming conventions to be honest so I create a variable let multiples of number equals get multiples of number, blah, blah, blah. So I want to get the multiples of a given number. So what the number is, would be five, then seven, then, you know, and now the problem is a string limit. Yeah, we need to be careful with that because that's a string, right? So we should be consistent. We can even create a variable called limit equals, or actually we can follow a most style. You remember how most converts yes correct right so mo likes to do that at the plus yeah so with the plus we transform yeah a string into an array into a number sorry not an array yeah okay so once you got the multiples of a given number you can concat them right you can concat them to the list of multiples and I think that's pretty much it. We need to sort it. Yes, we do have to sort it. 
shorted, right? But that's not a big problem at the moment because if we want to sort the array, thankfully, the only thing we need to do is to do what? Dot sort, correct. Sort, uh, we got number one, comma, number two. How do we sort it, guys? Minus number two. I'm a bit still skeptical because we need to return the numbers as a strings again. You see? So in other words, after sorting, I'm going to use map, yeah? To give it a number, I will transform it into string number. Something like that. So yep. You can't say dot map string, but you can say oh. dot map number. No, that's a good question. That's yeah. a good point, Poppy. Yeah, let's do that. Yes. Just strings. Yes. Even sexier, you see? Brilliant, I like it. I like that, Poppy. Cool. Uh, probably we'll get a penalty on the elegance, right? Line number five is a bit long. So I'll rename the variable, <laughs> which is the lazy thing to do, right? I mean, it's fine to rename variables as far as they still make sense, right? I call it as multiples. Just to shorten the line. Say it again? Just to shorten the line. Yes, correct. Because otherwise we may get a penalty on the elegance, right? And I don't want to get a penalty on the elegance, right? Um, yeah, something like that. Still on the limit, I believe. Oh, let's have a look. We can always improve it afterwards. Look. Right, didn't work. Multiples of is not defined. Where is that? Line number seven. Oh, oh, I think... Yeah, it went too far with the variable renaming, right? So the default should be an empty array. I hope you agree on that. Let's try again. Hmm. Hmm. What's going on? Look at what's happening, right? It's duplicating the multiples of the second, of the last one. You see? Look, look. 7, 7, 14, 14, and then here, 8, 8, 16, 16. Hmm, that's interesting. Why is that happening? Because we use what? Concat. Yeah, should be fine, right? Yeah, I mean, not, not against that, Hazel. Um, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, I think so was adding it on the second one. Yeah. Here? No, they are numbers, right? We converted from strings to numbers. So in theory, yeah, we are dealing with numbers all the time. So I'm going to sacrifice a bit of elegance, of accuracy, actually. I'll do a console.log. I want to do divide and conquer. I want to see if the problem, that, that's what I would like to prepare these like, problems, right? Because if there is any issue, I want to show you how uh, do I debug problems, right? Cool, so I'm going to add a console log literally in the middle because then if that's correct, I know the problem is later on. But if that's wrong, the problem is probably earlier on, yeah? Could be something silly somewhere. Let's have a look. If we run the console log, no, oh, look, that looks correct, right, guys? Five, 10, 15, 20, seven, 14, 21. 714, I believe that's the second example. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the thing is, our second function is correct. That function is correct. Divide and conquer. So now I know the problem is, 
Yeah, somewhere later on. Again, let's sacrifice a bit of accuracy. I want to see what that returns without sorting, without transforming. I want to see if it's a problem with the return statement of the reduce. Yes, it is. Look. So the numbers are not correctly concatenated. That's interesting, right? Oh, 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 I found it. Right. Does anyone know why it's failing? I told you it was a silly mistake. What is the problem? Yes, so how do we solve the problem? Change to what? Uh, name. Name of what? I sell? Multiples, Multiples of. of. That's correct, yeah. Right? So That's a classic. Yeah. That's a classic problem when you have to deal with multiple similar variables. You rename one and you rename the wrong one. Classic problem, right? So, because now I'm 50% sure that will work, let's try again. That's it, right? Now it works. However, as expected, as expected, line 5 exceeds the maximum line length of 65. So now we can do two things. We can play in balance mode. He's, according to his standards, this is not a problem, so he leaves it like that. Or we can play according to the game standards, right? <laughs> and we can solve it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know. It was a different example, but that's the same, the same kind of reasoning, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Right. So, generally speaking, the easiest way to solve the problem is simply doing that. Yeah. Look. Then, problem solved. Yeah. It's not very nice. Well, this, like, I, I could argue that, right? I'm so used to writing these kind of things that, and I think that that's kind of a standard, right? So. No. No. Should be fine. We can always rename the variables, you know, there are multiple strategies, right? And the thing is, regardless of the strategy you follow, right, at least now the code is a standard. And again, this is not according to my preferences, it's according to ESLIM preferences. No, no, no. Okay. So with ESLIM, we can configure rules. And out of these rules, you can fine tune them. So one rule in ESLIN is how long the max line, the, you know, the max length of your line is. How acceptable, right? So the, on the industry, generally speaking, the max length is set to 70. Generally speaking, we're a bit stricter because I want you to, fo I want to force you to create shorter lines, yeah, as far as possible. Right. That was a bit tricky, right? And again, to me, the complexity here was not on the algorithm itself, was on defining proper variable names. Multiples, multiples of, get multiples of, get multiples of number, right? It's very easy to ruin your productivity with these kind of problems. Let me see what you did here. Right. Few solutions here, right? So Megan, for instance, she's getting a similar approach, right? So she's getting the multiples of a number using a read for each, and then she's sorting, and then she's doing a map. So that's pretty similar, pretty similar. Ben, hmm, hmm, hmm. So Ben, yeah, yeah. so he's using a nested loop. So first of all, Give me the individual numbers, and then for each number, give me the multiples. Actually, it's on the other way around, right? So first of all, he gets all the numbers from the first one to the limit. That's why you, you see the problem here. The main reason why is I'm struggling to understand the solution is because of the semantics. Array and a string number. 
What that means? I don't know. String number. What was that? That's the limit, right? Or the threshold, I don't know. But the string number, that's very broad, in my opinion. So he's first getting all the numbers between one and the limit. And then he's, for each element of the array, yeah, he's determining whether, you know, numbers are uh, multiples of the given one or not. And then Bala, uh, so Bala is sorting, is there any reason why you sort twice, Bala? Uh, why I sort twice? Yeah. I don't think the first one matters at all, right? It's, it's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. Yep. And, and then I just, uh, you know, for that length, uh, yep. you know, just get that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you, Bala. And finally, Mo. So Mo is using a map to iterate. It's very similar to, essentially, uh, what Ben proposed, right? Two nested loops. He's first looping on, on its number, on the first argument. And then he's just, uh, you know, pushing the, the multiple, right? So it's very similar to what we did. Instead of using reduce, he's using map and, and that's it, right? Cool. Any question, guys? Yeah, for Bala, actually. Yeah. We need a math, math of floor because yeah yeah. Yep. Yeah yeah yeah. Agree on that. Thank you, Vala. So let's move to the next question. Question number three. Oh, it's a new one as well, right? A difference. Right, I click somewhere, right? Add dif uh, okay, so let me display question number three. Oh, we skip it. Okay, let me go back. <laughs> I'm clicking randomly on the screen at the moment, but <laughs> a difference. So what a difference means? We got two arrays. Yeah. And we want to take the unique values, the ones that are only in one of the sides, and then add them all, yeah? So why the result on the first example is five? Because on the left-hand side, the unique value is one. One is not on the right. And on the right-hand side, the unique value is four. Four is not on the left. One plus four equals five, yeah? So, right, let's just start, as usual, creating the function. Function add diff, we've got two array of numbers, array one, array two. So I'm going to create another function straight away called uh, get unique. So get unique, yeah, correct. It receives against two arrays or array A and array B to avoid confusions, doesn't matter, right? Two arrays. And now, we're going to get all the elements on the first array that are not present on the second one. This is something quite simple to achieve by using filter, for instance, right? Yeah. Filter and includes. So you're going to return array A dot filter. So we got a number. So then, keep the number if array B doesn't include the number, yeah. yeah, it's pretty simple actually. 
So now we can create a variable here called let uh, unique array one maybe equals get unique array one comma array two and on the other way around right we can duplicate the line unique array two yeah so now we got two arrays all the elements that are unique on the first array and all the elements that are unique on the second array now we want to have a single array yeah you could we could use concat or we can simply return remember with uh, the spread operator how sexy this is right unique array one comma unique array two it's pretty pretty nice i believe once we got that well we said to get the total right and just reduce as daniel is suggesting total value total plus value do we need the default value why? Why? Let's see what happens if we don't put the default value. Yeah? Let's see what happens first. Yeah? Fair enough. Right. Look. Hmm. It doesn't look that bad, actually, guys. Four out of five test cases pass not bad but however ooh, what's going on here in the last case yeah there are, there are no unique values right all the values on the left are on the right and vice versa yeah. so in other words this array is empty on the last case because the array is empty reduce has nothing to do at unless unless we pass a default value zero if we pass a default value zero reduce will say okay because the length of the array is zero there's nothing to do i will return the default value straight away yeah, that's probably the most elegant way to do that so if we run it again now that's good yeah that was a simpler question, I believe. Let me see what you did. Megan. You see the problem with Megan? Is, even though she did pretty much the same thing we did, her code looks a bit more complicated because she's, she didn't create any utility function. So she's doing the same thing twice, right? That's why I strongly recommend you to create these kind of functions yeah because then your code becomes way simpler sees also explicitly what happened if the array of the length of the array is zero we don't need that right the solution was simply putting comma zero right but apart from that all good right good answers here lots of solutions so ben he literally did the same thing i did uh bala yeah it's pretty much the same thing right so he's creating a new array yeah again that, that's the same thing the only thing is that return statement could get simplified by just simply adding comma zero on the reduce statement yeah uh, daniel same thing mo mo Ooh. Ooh. okay so mo yeah so he first gets the first the elements on the left that are not on the right then he gets the elements on the right that are not on the, on the left then he joins both arrays and then he adds them all because he put the comma zero he doesn't need to do any if else tricks at the end and i sell Again, the same thing, right? So array one, array two, she joins both arrays, and then she adds the values. Cool. Easy question, guys, for the expert training. 
Question number three. Any question? No? Question number four. Exist number in object. We've done that already, guys. Yeah, yeah please. Please check the. Yeah? Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 that's true. You're right. You're right, guys. Yes. So even though we saw that question, that particular one is about, uh, so we've got that code and it doesn't work and we need to figure out why, right? So what's it, what happened if we run the code at the moment? Yeah. So it's essentially unable to find the uh, value. Right, let me read that. I've never seen that. So, property in object. So, object is, uh, yeah, an object with numbers in it. So, we said, if it's not an object, then return true if they are the same, else do recursion, right? go deeper and then see if it exists or not. So I believe the reason why it, doesn't, it never works is because, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I see it's the first time I, I see that problem, even if we are able to find it, because I'm pretty sure here we find it eventually, because we are doing recursion, we continue with the loop, so, we go to the next iteration and essentially that value true will become false at some point. So I'm going to create a variable called let exist equals false. Yeah. So essentially instead of returning something straight away, I'll wait. I'm not going to return anything. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I would like to say um, how can we do that, guys? Um, okay, exist equals that exist. You know. But now I want to do that if and only if exist is false, yeah? So in other words, for each iteration, I would like to do if doesn't exist, then do your magic. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, not, not, not against that bala, not against that, yeah. Yeah, of course, we, we can simplify this if else structure a bit, right? Yeah. Right. So again, he said, if it doesn't exist, by default it won't exist, right? So then check if now it exists. Well, as soon as it exists, then yes, don't do anything else, right? You found it. As soon as it exists, just return it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, will this work, guys, or not? A break. Yes. The break doesn't make any sense here. Break works with, well, not so if I may. No, with four loops as well. But the thing is, if we put break, I believe we're stopping the loop on the first iteration, right? We don't want to stop the loop. We're going to go until the end, or at least until we find the value. Right. Looks like it works. Yeah. Okay, now we got the warnings. Function exists, numbering object has too many statements. All right, let's solve that. Let's solve that. So, because that logic is a bit complicated, let me refactor it. Yes, I like that, Daniel. Let's do that. Yes, let's use a ternary operator. We can do 
exist equals exist or yeah why that because if it already exists you remember what true or something returns true right so this is saying that that's equivalent true or something returns true true or false returns true true or zero return true and so on right let's say okay if it exists return it otherwise then okay then let's investigate what's going on so if it's not an object then do that else if it's an object then do the recursion thingy something like that yeah let's see if that works yeah it does work yeah we just need to add a semicolon somewhere line number nine yeah here right oops i'm typing nowhere so put a semicolon there yeah and now all good Uh huh. Yeah, I see your point, Bala. Uh, no, yeah, but, but look, 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 Bala says, could you please fix it respecting the for in looping structure? We respected it. So the, the question was, don't change it to reduce, to map, something like that. Keep using for in, right? Yeah, cool. Actually, that was uh, an actual answer of one of the meetup members. Yeah, I found it particularly interesting. Cool. So let me see what you did. Uh, exist number in object. Um, yeah, it's good because everyone respected the for in structure, right? So you clearly follow the structure, which is a good thing. Um, so Ben. What Ben is doing, ignoring the indentation issues, is as soon as we found it, we return true. And at the end, if we didn't return anything, that means we didn't found it, return false. Fair enough. Yeah, not against that. Yeah, yeah. And then Bala, yeah, it's pretty much what we did, right? So he initializes a variable. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Thank you, Vala. Daniel. Same thing, right? It's pretty much the same same solution. And finally, Mo. It's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so look at what Mo is doing. Following Ben's example is if we found it, then break break the loop, right? Break the loop means, as Vala suggested, it's more efficient because as soon as we find the number, give up. What's the point of iterating until the end of the of the array, right? Once you found it, that's it. Cool, good stuff, guys. I think that's pretty much it, right? Because as you will imagine, I'm not going to do question number five, <laughs> which because uh, out of coincidence has been the last question, maybe in the last three challenges, right? So, yeah, yeah. So obviously now, you know, the majority of you managed to find the answer. Anything else, people? No? Hangouts, guys? Bala, Mo, Dave? Thank you, Ala, for the feedback. Cool. That was it for today, guys. Thank you very much. Two challenges remaining. So please. And one week. That's correct, right? These are the call figures. So please keep working hard. Cheers.